Hello, everyone. Can you guys hear me out there? All right. There, you can't hear me, huh? There we go. Okay, great. Glad to see every one of you. We just came from a two-week trip to Africa. And, and people ask me, how was the trip? And, and I think people think, oh, man, it must have been really fun. I'm not saying it wasn't fun, but it's a hard, lot of hard work. So, I mean, just getting over there takes like two days, you know, by planes, 18-hour flights, eight-hour flights. And, and then once we get there, then we have to take a long trip on a bus for hours to even get to our location. That's the first location. Uh, and, and the roads aren't like in America where you have these nice freeways. It's, it's just dirt roads. It's dirt roads. Um, it's very bumpy. Um, it's very 100% uncomfortable. The, 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 the air condition doesn't work on the bus. I mean, like there, it, no comforts, right? Um, but, but why would we ever sacrifice like that, spend our money, um, invest uh, our time, be discomforted? Why would we do all that? Because one person matters. Because one person matters. And, and, and we see that kind of mindset. We see that kind of mindset with Jesus on the cross that he's dying for the sins of mankind. He's just got betrayed and, and abandoned by every one of his disciples. He's on that cross. And then he has a, a person that's being crucified with him. He's a thief. And the guy's a smart aleck. Like, even while he's dying, he's a smart aleck. He says, Jesus, if you're really Jesus, if you're really the Savior, why don't you get yourself down from here and get us down too? He's like trying to hustle Jesus on the cross, right? He's still hustling, right? And, 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 then, and then the other thief that's on the other side tells his buddy, he goes, shut up. This is what happens. Shut up, man. We deserve to be here because we're thieves. It, He's done nothing wrong. And he turns to Jesus. He goes, Jesus, when you go into paradise, when you go into heaven, will you just remember me? And Jesus is 100% ready to save him, forgive him, set him free. He'd never been to church. And, and you know what's so cool about Jesus? He goes, he, he says this, you're going to die today. And today you're going to be with me in paradise. Come on, isn't that a great God that's... Even while he's on the cross, he's saving one. And then right before he breathes his last breath, he just, he says to every, he just says, God, Father, forgive them. They don't even know what they're doing. And, and what God is saying, he's always trying to show mercy and grace and love. And one person matters. And, and I think when we get in a crowd like this or a crowd wherever you're listening to or or maybe you feel like you're all alone and no one cares. And, and this is what God says. I care about you. You're not an accident. I came for you specifically. And whatever need you have, I know what it is. And I could help you with it. Today, someone's going to get a miracle not, because they're not just part of a crowd. They're realizing I'm an individual and God cares about individuals. Do we understand? That's why we go to Africa. Now, when we look at our little children that are there... Uh, I, I, I want you, I, I think we could look, oh, those are orphans, or those are kids, but, but these are people. These are little souls that, that are scared, and their moms and dads, many of them died, and they got left on the streets with no one to feed them and take care of them. And if it wasn't for our orphanage to take them in, um, we don't know where they'd end up. We, we took in, uh, la uh, two years ago, a little baby that, that was just born, a couple months born, abandoned. We took her in. I just went to see her this, this trip. She's around two years old. She came up to me. She's healthy because we're feeding her every day. She's clothed and she has family. We're her family. And she has family. But why? Because one person matters and... One little boy matters, and one little girl matters, and the prostitutes are on those streets trying to just survive. They matter, and, they, and we provide them a way of escape and to get out of those lifestyles. And I'll tell you this, you matter. You got you to gotta really get that in your life. I, I, I'm telling you, there's a devil out there that makes you feel like you're worthless, that you're nothing, that no one cares. And God says, hey, what about me? I care. I care so much for you 
that I gave my life for you. I died for you. I suffered for you because I want a relationship with you. Don't forget about me. But, but the de- you know, a life will make you for, like forget about all that and just, they left me. They hurt me. They abandoned me. They, and, and before I made this mistake, I'm no good. I mean, man, I, man I, I regret for what... I regret what I've done. I'm telling you, you live in regret. It's the most wasted energy of your life and thought. Everybody's messed up. Join the club. And we all need forgiveness. And we all need a savior. Come on. And we all need, come on, we all need restoration. Uh, come on, we all need a new beginning. Get over it. Uh, yeah, I messed up. And Jesus forgave me. And he, he forgave me, he can forgive you too. And I want you to, when you regret in life, you know what you're doing? Living in the past. It's time to stop living in the past. God has a great future for you. But you're never going to go forward focusing on all your past and every mistake you made. And God's able to restore all your mess ups because that's what he came for. He came for a whole bunch of sinners that messed up. And he wants to reconcile you, restore you, set you free, give you a new life, and then show you off in front of the world. That's our God. I love him. Today, we have our churches all over tuning in today. So we have, I want you to give him a hand. The Way Arizona is here. The Way LA. The Way Pomona. The Way Arrowhead. The Way Tijuana, Mexico. The Way Oregon. The Way Kenya. The Way Uganda. And plus a hundred churches in Uganda. The prisons that we're in and thousands of people tuning in. Let's give them a hand. Let them know we're so glad you're here with us. And, and today we're going to be talking about, about really the most important purpose or subject in this, li- in this life is, is why are we here? What's our purpose as, be- as believers? And if it was just you getting saved, that's great. And have a relationship with God, that's awesome. But you're here for a purpose. And the title of this sermon is this, I send you. We're always saying, we're always thinking, man, God sends somebody. He goes, no, I send you. I'll send somebody, you. I'll send you to the hurt, hurting. I'll send you to the hungry. I'll send you to the lost. I'll send you to the sinners. I'll send you to the broken. I'll send you to the addict. Come on, I'll send you to the homeless. I'll send you, you. I'll send you to your crazy crazy family. Come on. I'll send, I'll send you to your neighbors. I'll send you to your co-workers. God is sending someone and say this, God's sending me. And when he sends you, he empowers you. So you're not going alone. He goes, I'm going with you. If you just go, we'll go together and I'll meet you right where you're at and I'll help you help them. Isn't this great that God has a purpose for our life and he's sending us. So let's pray. Father, we just thank you for this time that we study your word. And, and we're just talking about you sending us and what are you sending us to do and how can we practically carry this sent uh, mission out? You know, how can we do that in a practical way? So we say you're going to show us today, Holy Spirit, convict us of sin and, and assume coming judgment because we, it's, it's going to one day all end. And we want to make sure that every person that's listening and our family, our friends are, are, are going to be saved and, and they're not going to be saved by accident. Someone's going to have to go out there and reach them. And we're the ones that you're called to reach them, Father. And we're going to do it, Father. We just thank you in Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. You may be seated. So glad to be back. I, I want to just open up with three truths about being sent. And it's, these are facts about being sent. And it's super common sense. I'm going to read you the scripture. Um, but there's, this is the truth number one. No one will believe in Jesus and be saved unless they hear about him, and no one will go and tell them unless they are sent. That means, uh, this is simple. How can someone believe if they've never heard about him? And how will someone go unless they're sent? This is the scripture. In Romans 10, 14, and 15, it says, but how can they call on him, which is Jesus, to save them? That means that people get saved when they call on him to save them. No one gets saved by accident. That means be careful that you think because you were baptized as a baby, you got saved. You you get saved when you decide to get saved, when you hear God call you and he will save you. That's when you get saved. 
It's okay to dedicate your baby to the Lord, but you cannot save them. When they grow up, they're going to have to make a decision for themselves to call on Jesus. And understand, no one's going to get into heaven by accident. Like, you're not going to be like, ooh, I got here. You choose heaven, and I'll even say this is crazy. You'll choose hell too. So you choose your destination. It's just like when we ended up in Uganda, it's like, how did we end up here? Well, we got flights, and we, made, and we paid for the flights. And we, where's this plane going? Uganda. Okay, that's the one we're on. So if you want to go to heaven and you want to be saved and you want to be set free and you want to be whole, then you're going to have to make a decision. Call on Jesus because if you don't call, you don't get saved. You can't get saved by your mama. You can't get saved by church attendance. You can't get, get saved by membership. You're going to have to call on Jesus. And I'm telling you this, you're going to have to humble yourself and say, I need to be saved. Right? But no one's going to call on Jesus to be saved if... Unless they believe in him. And how can they believe in him if they've never heard about him? Like, they're not going to believe in him. Faith comes by hearing. People start believing when they start hearing. That's what marketing is all about. Some of you guys are buying stuff. You didn't even know you needed it until you saw the commercial. I need that. How come you didn't know that until you saw the commercial? And I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not breaking this down to that simplicity, but the truth is, um, that's what marketing is all about. How can someone know about your product if they've never, and buy your product if they've never heard about it? How is anybody going to believe in Jesus if they've never heard someone tell them about Jesus? Understand, angels aren't coming down and speaking to your sons, to your daughters, to your friends, to your neighbors. He sent you. He's sending me to my workplace. He's sending me to my family. I'm going to have to open my mouth up. And, and some of us have big mouths. It's time to use it for Jesus. I'm offended. If you have a big mouth, that's why you're getting nothing. No, but the idea is, is we'll argue, we'll fight. We'll, I mean, some of us will cuss the storm up. Say, Jesus, forgive me. And you're really bold about, about, about getting your way. But when was the last time you got bold about telling somebody about Jesus so they could be saved, so they could have eternal life, so they could have hope, so they could get healed, so they could get restored? Understand, Jesus is the hope of the world. And we're, and we're in partnership. And how can they hear about Jesus unless someone tells them? And how will anyone go and tell them without being set and sent? And this is what it's saying. No one's going without being sent. This is a commission from the Savior of the world, from, from the highest authority in the world, in the universe. And he says, I call you and I send you to your world. I send you to your neighborhood. I send you to your family. I send you to your generation. This is what God is saying. I'm sending you. Say this, God sending me. And this truth number three, two, I mean, the message of the sent is good news, is a good news. So we have a message. It's not bad news. It's good news. It's good news. And you might be saying, well, what's the good news? Is that you can be forgiven and you can be saved. And I'll tell you, the good news is that Jesus paid the price for every wrong thing you've ever done so you could be forgiven. And when you die, there's no judgment for you because Jesus paid the price for everything you've done wrong. You know what that means? Stop being living under a guilt trip. You don't have to live under a guilt trip. And when you have a guilt trip, because I, I'm aware when I do stuff wrong. Are you aware? Yeah, I, I'm aware I do stuff wrong. And, and this is what I'll try to uh, understand. If I don't like ask forgiveness and, and deal with that thing, it's a guilt trip on me. And when you have a guilt trip, this is what you do. You sabotage yourself. Because even when you start doing good, you'll do something crazy to mess it all up. And you'll, you know why you'll do it? Because you don't think you deserve good in your life. You'll mess up your relationships. You'll mess up your money. You'll mess up. You'll, you'll just mess up everything. I don't deserve it. So in this idea, God is saying, I know you don't deserve it, but I've, I've forgiven you, and I paid the price. I'm going to give you what you don't deserve, and it's time for you to start saying, God, I know I don't deserve it, but God, if I qualify for your best because you've forgiven me, I want it. Does anybody want God's best? So this is the message. This is the message, good news. Jesus took God's punishment for our sins and every one of us can be forgiven and receive the gift of eternal life by faith in Jesus. In Hebrews 9, 28, it says, Christ also died only once as a sacrifice. In this way, he took God's punishment for sins, uh, for the sins of many people. The idea is, uh, and say, well, what are you talking about? This is what I'm talking about. When you make wrong decisions, there's consequences. How many could say, well, that's true. 
and, and, and sin has consequences. And you might be saying, well, why would I want to call on Jesus to save me? Save me from what? First, this is what he's going to save you from. He's going to save you from you. Some of us need to be saved from you. You crazy. You're angry. You can't, you can't get out of your own way. How many times New Year's you say, I'm going to stop doing this. I'm going to stop doing this. I'm going to stop doing this. Or after a bad weekend, you, Monday you wake up, and I'll never do that again until Friday. You need to get safe from you. You need to get safe from your bad habits. You need to be safe. You come on. You need to be safe from your depression, from your anxiety. Come on, from your struggles, from your cycles of destruction. I need some saving. Does anybody need some saving? I need some healing. I need God to set me free. I need to get set free from the addiction. I need to get set free from the come on from hurting people, and hurting myself. God needs to do something with me. And this is what I've learned: you cannot save you, and you can't heal you. And that's why. Um, in life, as we get abused and we go through life, um, there's almost like a rejection that we'll start experiencing. I start feeling unworthy. Um, also, there's deep emotional pain and emptiness that all of us experience without the Lord. And without the Lord, understand, if you're not saved, you remain empty. If you're not saved, you remain depressed. And there is no hope. If you're not saved, it just becomes chronic. And this is what we do with our pain, our hurt, our emptiness. We, we try to medicate ourselves, and that's where the addictions start coming in. Because I don't want to live this way. I want to have some peace. I want to have some relief. And what do you do? And what do we do? We go to, maybe I could drink it away. Maybe I could smoke it away. Maybe I could relationship it away. In the 80s, they even had a song where I needed some sexual healing. You don't need sexual healing. You need Jesus to heal you. I just need sex. No, you don't. Get off that site. You guys are laughing. You know what I'm talking about. It's true. <laughs> you don't need more weed? Come on. Yes, I do. It's a herb. It's like tea. No, it ain't. Well, then drink tea then. Oh, it's different kind of tea. I know it is. <laughs> but these are things that I understand. Until you get healed, until you get set free, you're dependent on medication. You're dependent on sin to heal you of the consequences of sin. But there's only one that can save you. There's only one that can make you whole. There's only one that can restore you. There's only one that can, there's only one that can set you free. And he's the only, there's only one name to call on. And his name is Jesus. Come on. Arizona, Pomona, the way LA, Arrowhead. Come on. Say Jesus. That's it. So someone could get saved today by calling on Jesus. This is good news. He already paid the price. Now, this truth number three is many are ready to believe in Jesus if we'll just go and tell them. I, I, think, we, we, I think sometimes as a church, we have a, a perception nobody wants Jesus. And I'm telling you, I believe everybody wants Jesus. They just don't know what they want. They're trying to find peace. They're trying to find joy. They're trying to find purpose. They're trying to find meaning. They want to fix their family. They want to fix their relationships. They want to fix their marriages. They're in dysfunction. They know everything's wrong. They need to fix it. They just don't know how. And the answer is Jesus. And we have the answer. Why don't we just open up our mouths? Now, understand, you can't save them. You can't heal them. You can't deliver them. You can't give them eternal life. But there's one that gives them all that. But he's, it's a partnership. If you tell them, this is what God said. If you tell them about me, I'll do the saving. I'll do the healing. I'll do the deliverance. Come on. Someone needs to open up their mouths and just tell people about Jesus. And this is what God said. Tell them that I love them and I want a relationship with them. That I sent my son to pay the price for all their sins that I desire more than anything to forgive them and set them free. Tell them that I, they no longer need to live under the cruel taskmaster of Satan and in bondage of sin. Tell them that, uh, that they can have a new, full, and rich and satisfying life. Tell them that I have peace and joy and love that they've never experienced. Tell them that I, come on, tell them that I can save them from eternal judgment of sin and hell by just believing in my son and I sent, that I sent to suffer and die for their sins. Just tell Tell them. Now, crazy about, let's think about this. What if all the people around you end up dying and going to hell for eternity, 
And then they have one final conversation with you before they go. And they say, wait, 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 wait. You knew? You knew that I was in bondage, addicted, tormented by demons. I couldn't sleep. I had emotional pain. I was, I was suicidal. I was struggling in every era of my life. And you never told me about Jesus. What were you thinking? And you say, well, I was just, I was embarrassed. You knew, and you never invited me to church, and you never invited me to your small group Bible study, and we worked together for 20 years. You never presented Jesus to me, and I'm your son and daughter. You were too busy taking me to soccer and making sure my grades were great, and you didn't make sure I was saved. Mama, what were you thinking? I know it's getting quiet here now. I, I just think we need to wake up. Right? Look what it says, Jesus says about this. Then Jesus said, in Matthew 9, 37, it says, Jesus said to his disciples, which is us, many people are ready to believe God's message. They are like crops in the fields at harvest time, but there are very few workers to bring in the crops. So pray to God to send out workers the field and the crops belong to him. And I want to just now discuss this question. What if the scent never went? What if the scent never went? Uh, we just came on our way back. We, we stopped in a, a country named Turkey. And everybody thought they were going to get turkey sandwiches and stuff. It's, <laughs> I mean, that was a joke. And I was like, uh, it's kind of like lame joke. <laughs> yeah, but, but anyways. So, but we stopped in Turkey, and when you fly in, you see a whole bunch of moss, like, and, and there's this beautiful moss, and you can see them while you're flying, and I go, man, it's a Muslim nation. 90, 95% of the nation is Muslim. Um, but when you go into Istanbul, which is a city that we stayed at, it's beautiful. Like, it's European. It's, it's, it looks like a little bit of, of Eng England and France and Italy, all that combined in this beautiful city. Then I found, when, and it has a lot of people like New York. Thousands of people walk in the streets. It, it's in a canal uh, right off the ocean. Really, really beautiful city. They have 44 million visitors uh, a year just to come in as, as guests and, and travel to Istanbul. So when I drove through, as we're driving and we get in there, we start driving. I go, man, this place is beautiful. Like, What's the history here? It looks European. It doesn't look like it's all Muslim. What, what is it? So then I found out that um, it wasn't always Muslim. It was actually Christian. That 75% of, of Turkey was Christian. And this is what happened. The next generation that was sent to reach their generation didn't go. So we're always one generation away from ignoring the call of God to tell others about Jesus. And then by the next generation, there's atheists, non-believers, and we lost a whole generation, and not, now there's nobody that's Christian. Over there, there's only less than 1% of people are Christians in the whole nation. And all those beautiful cathedrals that I saw that were, that, that were these big mosques, they were actually churches Christian churches that were actually now turned into mosques and museums. So what if the scent never go? This is what's going to happen. No one's going to believe. No one will be saved. They remain in their, in, their, in their hopelessness. They remain in their addiction. They remain in their fears. They remain there in their anxiety. They remain sick. They remain tormented by demons, confused by the devil. No one gets saved. No one has eternal life because it was a group of believers that didn't take the call of Jesus serious. Now I'm going to tell you a story how this church started. So how this church started was over 50 years ago. Not that we're a church of 50 years, probably 60 years ago. But there was a, there was a girl, and this is a question. What if she wouldn't have gone when she was sent? He said, who is this girl? Well, years ago, my mother, uh, she just graduated from the University of Puerto Rico. That's her. That's my mother. And 
She was now, she got a degree. She was going to be a, a, a teacher, and she had a degree in liberal arts. She came back to, from Puerto Rico to the Virgin Islands, and she just got there. She was going to get a job at the Catholic school to be one of the teachers there. And while she was there, there was a young little Mexican girl that came all the way from Mexico. She was sent from Mexico to this little island called St. Croix, Virgin Islands. She was sent, but I want you to think about it as a 20-something-year-old little Mexican girl that she believes that God is sending her to an island, and she's probably thinking, man, I'm gonna, I just want to share my faith. I want to tell people about Jesus, and she gets, and I want you to think about the work. She has to get her, she has to get her passport. She has to get her visa. She has to save up all the money to get there, and then she has to overcome every single fear to meet people that she never met, and she's saying, I'm going to do all of this, because I want to reach some souls for Jesus Christ. So she gets there on this island by herself, not with a team. It wasn't a mission to her, by herself. And she starts knocking on doors. So she starts knocking on doors, inviting people to show up to the service that night because she's going to share her testimony and share her faith. And she's going to tell people about Jesus so they can believe and be saved. So my mom, she knocks on the door and, and, and my mom opens the door. She sees this little Mexican girl, a young adult. And she goes, yes, how can I help you? And she goes, well, uh, I just want to invite you to church tonight. I'm speaking. And my mother looked at her. She goes, you're speaking. Because she was not very impressed with, like, you're speaking. And, and she goes, I, she said, my mom told me, I went not because I thought she could speak. I went to just find out, like, what is this little girl going to say? It was more like, this is a circus show. Let me check this out. So my, my mom went to that service that night, and she preached with all of her heart, and she gave the message of Jesus Christ, and she let my mother know that Jesus died for her sins, and that she could be forgiven, and she could have eternal life, and she could be made whole, and she could have the abundant life, and God will restore her, and God will give her purpose. And when, when she made the call, my mom walked down, and she gave her life to Jesus. Now, she gave her life to Jesus, and I'm sure that girl was saying, what a way, like, I went knocking on doors, and only one person came. I gave the call for salvation, and only one person gave their life to Jesus. But if that lady did not go to Mexico, I mean, to go to uh, the, uh, the Virgin Islands and knock on that door, I wouldn't be here today. You wouldn't be here today. So what my mother did, she trained me and Robert to be disciples of Jesus Christ, and then she sent us. So what if she didn't go, and what if we didn't go? I'm telling you, we would not be reaching people in Africa. We would not have homes. We would not have thousands of people. Hundreds of thousands of people are hearing the gospel. None of it would have happened if someone did not go. Isn't that amazing? There's me, my mama, and Pastor Robert. He's so cute, huh? It's cute. Now, also, what's crazy is, is the DNA of this church was that lady. We started this church, and I, I just thought about it today um, as I was writing these notes, and, and I was thinking about how she knocked on doors and how our church started knocking on doors. That lady, does, that lady when she gets to heaven, she's going to be massively surprised when millions of people heard the gospel because she was willing to go to an island and speak to people, get out of her comfort zone, and just do her part. All I'm telling you, I don't know her name, but God knows her name. And I don't know all your names, but God knows your name. And if God could use that little Mexican girl, he could use you if you're just willing to open up your mouth and tell people about Jesus. Now, I think about what if we didn't go to Africa. I think one of the stories that, that, that hits me is, is that, that, that prison that we went to that, that denied us. When, when they denied us of going in that prison, we prepared. We came all the way from California to go into prison, and we're prepared. We have our team ready to go. And right when we're ready to go in, they tell us, we're not going to let you in because you guys are taking pictures. And we were like, well, we'll put away our phones. I mean, we'll put them in the bus. We'll do whatever you want. Nope, it's over. We're ready to talk to everybody. You can't go. And we're like, Okay. Like, I was starting to get a little ghetto. I mean, I was just. <laughs> Do you know where I'm from? I'm from San Bernardino. <laughs> We've seen worse hoods than this. <laughs> Our whole church. <laughs> Before they got saved. You don't know what you're <laughs> You 
got some killers up in there. You guys aren't real criminals. I'll show you some real gangs. No, I'm just kidding. No, I'm, just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I, I, maybe I'm not kidding. I'm just saying. So, so, what we, so this is what we did. One of the pastors stood up and said, well, we could go to, there's another place that we'll open up right now, and we, for sure we could get in there, and it was these kids in juvenile hall. Now, the kids in juvenile hall, it's a totally different story than kids here. Those kids, most of them have no parents, and they got caught um, stealing or something like that, and then they get put in a, a system, but there's like no way out of the system. That means um, you can't get out of the system because there's no court date for you if you don't have a lawyer. Well, how are they going to get a lawyer um, if they have no money and they're orphans? And, and, and in Kenya, what they were doing with these kids was hanging them and killing them. So they'd catch them, stealing, and then they'd hang them publicly and the kids, and that's why when, the last time we went, we opened up a home to rescue kids off the streets because they were there was, there was starting to lynch a lot of them. And we said, we're not going to let them lynch them. So we opened up the hero's home to get them off the street. That was when we found out. Or they get in this system. And I, and I just started thinking, man, I go, thank God you sent us to this, this place. We can make a difference. So the first thing we did found out, the, the kids were hungry. They're not being fed. It's not like, it's not like America where, where there's taxes and a lot of money coming in. The, the kids are starving. They're hungry. They live in this condition with no hope, and they can't get out. So what we did was for sure we brought them food, and now we have a team that's going to bring them some cows and chickens, and, and we're going to make sure they got food there. We're going to teach them how to farm, and then we're sending a, pre, a, 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 a farmer there to teach them how to take care of the cows. So we're going to make sure they always have food. But this is what I was thinking, too. Why not go further and, and really reach them? And I'm thinking, let's start a ministry where we bring lawyers in to get these kids set free and then open up a home and start discipling them for Jesus Christ. Because when we're being sent, we're ready to go to work. Come on, is there anybody ready to go to work for somebody you don't even know? That's what it's all about. So we're being sent. Now, Jesus was sent, and now he sends us. Jesus said the, that he said to them, peace be with you, as the Father has sent me, so I am sending you. Say it with me, God is sending me. The same way Jesus was sent, he's sending me. He's just sending me to my world. He's sending me to my family, he's sending me to my city, he's sending me to the people around me, and I have to realize I'm called, but I'm sent as well. I'm sent, I thank God that he sent us to begin this church in San Bernardino. And when he sent me to San Bernardino, he sent us to San Bernardino, we started in, the, in the worst, one of the worst neighborhoods in the city. And why did we start there? Because we're willing to go where no one else is willing to go. And I didn't know nothing about starting a church or anything like that. But I heard a call from God, and I was just willing to be obedient and just go where he told me to go. And I remember he told me to go to the neighborhood, and he told me, go love the people. And I go, how do I love the people? Like, I don't know how to love people in the hood. I, like, what do you do? Like, you can't just go hug people. <laughs> You're liable to get socked or something. Come here, gangster, you little cute gangster. Come here, baby. <laughs> give, me, give, give me a hug. Come on, come on right here, right here. He goes, no, that's not how you love people. You, don't, you can love people that way, but that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying find their needs and meet them. Find out where they're hurting and do everything you can to relieve them of that pain, of that hurt. That's the way you show love. When I, see, when I came to earth, I knew your greatest pain. I knew your greatest hurt. And I came to die for your greatest need. You needed a savior. You needed someone to set you free. You needed someone to restore you. So go over there and show them my love in a practical way. And we went. And within months, 500 people from the neighborhood said, Man, you've been so good to us and loved us and fed us and met our needs and, and been taking, praying for us and, and, and taking care of our kids. And, and, and she, the father's not there, but you, you, you sent some friends that were in the church to go to my son's, my, my son's basketball game. He's never had anybody visit him. And we started visiting, we started visiting senior citizens that had nobody in their life. And we just had some tea with them and loved them and care for them. And every single one of us started saying this, where's your church? I go, we don't have one, but when we do, would you come? And that's, that's what being sent is all about. So we were, we were sent and then people began to come. 
our first service, I've said this before, we had 500 people come from the streets. We had homeless people come. We had prostitutes come. We had the hood come. We had gang members come. 400 people gave their lives to the Lord because the truth is, once they hear about Jesus, many will believe. Let's give the Lord a hand. It's happening in L.A. It's happening in Arizona. It's happening in Tijuana. It's happening in Kenya. It's happening in Uganda. It's happening in Oregon. And the prisons, everywhere we go, people are being saved. So this is, a, I would say, we're going to answer this question, very simple. What's some practical things that we can do as we're walking this out to save souls and make disciples as, as we go? One, number one, pray to be empowered by the Holy Spirit to tell people about Jesus. Like, pray, God, give me boldness. Give me your strength. I, and in Acts 1, 8, it says, but the Holy Spirit will come on you and give you power. The Holy Spirit will give you what? That's God's power in you. You will be my witnesses. That means you'll tell people about me, and you you will tell people uh, everywhere about me. And he said, once you have the power of the Holy Spirit, you're going to start getting bolder. You're going to start stepping out. And God's saying, I'm going to back you up. That means when I back you up, my presence is going to be there when you tell them about me. They're going to be convicted of their sin. They're going to ask you, what do I need you to be saved? Some of them are going to be healed on the spot. They're going to be set free from demons on the spot because God's saying, I'm going to endorse your message and let them know that message did not just come from a man or a woman. It came from me, and it's empowered by my spirit. Let me put my stamp on my power. How many want to have a start having a powerful Christian life? Now, how are you going to have a powerful Christian life when you don't have the powerful message in your mouth. Number two, invite people to come. We could do that. God sends us to invite people to come to his house so that his house will be full. In Luke 14, 23, and the master said to the servant, go to the highways and the hedges and compel people to come in that my house will be filled. God wants his house full. I'm so glad we're full. I want every campus to be full. On Easter, we're going to have overflow. Right? Because we're going to invite our friends and family. We're going to have more services on Easter. We're going to have a 6 o'clock service where thousands of people are going to come early in the morning and they're going to hear the good news about Jesus Christ. We're going to have Friday, Good Friday services. We're going to have Sunday morning services. We're going to have, what are we going to do? We're opening this place up so people could come. We're going to invite them and they're going to hear the good news and many of them are going to believe. And they're going to receive the gift of eternal life. And they're going to be rescued from the judgment of sin. Invite people to come. Invite your friends not only come to church. Invite your friends to your Bible study. Invite your friends to join the Holy Warriors discipleship classes with you. Invite people to serve with you. Invite people to come over your house and just have dinner or go to Starbucks and have a cup of coffee and just begin to talk, build a relationship with them. Uh, we got to be careful that we're not so churchanized that we can't hang around some sinners. I'm not saying hang out doing what they're doing, but let them into your life. Well, they might cuss. So what? You watch a whole bunch of bad movies with cuss, all of a sudden, oh, can we please stop cussing? I'm a Christian. You're offending me. You feel like you're giving me the cooties. I'm, say, it's, uh, I'm not saying I want to have a whole bunch of dirty language, but it don't bother me. I'm reaching some sinners. They don't know God. I, come on. I used to be there. You used to be there. Don't forget where you come from because Jesus, this is what he was accused of, hanging around sinners because he needed to hang around sinners to reach sinners. Whoa. Wow, I never thought about that light bulb. Amen? Now, I'm not saying go smoke weed with them. So I clear this up right now. I'm going to strip club. <laughs> Reach some stripper. <laughs> you know you ain't supposed to do that, right? <laughs> All right, let's go. Let's go. Oh, here we go. <laughs> All right. Um, that doesn't find common ground and build relationships so, so that we can tell them about Jesus. Um, we need to be really good at relationships. Um, and, and finding common ground could be as simple as where they live. You live in the same area. 
they like the Dodgers, you like the Dodgers, they like golf, you like golf. They're in, it's just find a place that you could start with that they're in agreement, find some common ground, and use that to share your faith. Uh, in, in 1 Corinthians 9.22, it says, yes, whatever a person is like, I try to find common ground with them, with him, so that he will let me tell him about Christ and let Christ save him. And, and, and sometimes we're trying to rush in to tell people about Christ, and we haven't built a relationship yet. And I'm not saying all the time you can have a long time to build relationships, but learn how to, like, build really. We should be better at relationships than anybody. We're believers, right? And the fourth way to reach, reach, go out there and reach the lost is be kind and loving by finding needs and meeting them. In Jude 23, it says, save some by snatching them from the, from the very flames of hell itself. And we have to be aware that if we don't save them, they will go to hell for eternity on our watch, and we're just not going to make it easy for anybody to go to hell on our watch. Jesus died for them. All they have to do is believe in him, hear in him, hear from him, and they could give their lives to Jesus. And as for others, help them find the Lord by being kind to them. There's some people that will only come to Jesus when they see that you're nice. And, and I'm not talking about being nice to nice people. I'm, be, I'm talking about being nice to mean people. Because mean people are used for, used, they're used to this. I treat you mean. You're mean with me. And God is saying, why don't they treat you mean and that you be kind to them? Show them my love, and that's how you're going to save some of them. Your husband maybe hasn't got saved yet, but I want to make sure. Make sure you're nice. Because if you're not nice, he's thinking, you go home and you're mean to him. He's going to say, what are you learning in that church? What? And yet we want to reach it for Jesus. Maybe you need to go home and prepare him his, his favorite meal. Him? He don't deserve that. He's a dog. You're not going to reach him like that. There has to be a time that you give grace like God's giving you grace, that you give mercy when God's giving you mercy, and you give kindness, like, come on, that God gave you when you didn't deserve it. And, 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 but if you do cook him, not me, he's going to say, what happened to you? What ha well, I went to church. God is sending me to reach you. And I figured the way to man's heart is through his stomach. So I'm going to make you a nice little meal, let you know I love you. I love you. I love you. I love, I love, I love, I love. I love you. Okay. But most of all, Jesus loves you. Okay. That's why I'm doing it. But you'll be surprised how kindness will reach some people that otherwise your verbiage means nothing until you show them that you love them, that you care for them. How many believe we could do all these things? So let's invite some people. Let's get ready. And on all our churches, let's make Easter the biggest Easter we've ever had in the church history. And let's bring our friends, our family. I'm going to prepare a message that's going to bring them to Jesus Christ. I'll do all my part. You do your part. We'll work together. The Holy Spirit will do what we all can do. And he's going to save them, set them free, and they're going to have eternal life. And their lives will never be the same. They're one invitation away. Let's give the Lord a hand, everybody. The way LA, the way Pomona, the way Arrowhead. God bless you, Uganda, everybody out there. We love you guys. We're so glad that you guys tuned in and everybody tuned in as well. Let's all stand up and we're going to make, I'm going to dismiss in just a second. So no one leave until I dismiss. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you, Rudy. We share our faith everywhere we go. You know, and, and I, I was talking about Rudy. And, you know, as I went to work, I was not just go to work. I was sent to work by God. So at work, I'm an example. An example of the way I live. An example of the way I talk. I'm an example of the way I work. Like I, when I go in there as a Christian, I'm working. I have the right attitude. I'm working hard. I know they're all watching me anyways. I remember when I first got there, there was a, there was a cute little young lady, I don't, and, and she, everybody told me, oh, she's interested in you. And, and I, I believe, they didn't, I was new, so they were testing me. I'm, see, I'm like everybody else. I go, oh, I'm not, I'm, I'm married. I'm not interested at all. Um, I'm a Christian. I love God. And they're like, what? Why you, so you're saying, no, I go, no, I, that's, not, that's not my life. I live for God. And as I did that, maybe they got shocked at the beginning, but that all turned into massive respect in the end. 
And every single one of them, little by little, start cornering me when they had a problem and they, they were trying to overcome and they had an addiction or they had family problems or marriage problems. And then they say, hey, can you pray? Can you help me? Can you have a Bible study over my house? We really need your help. And that's what we do. So we're an example everywhere we go and because people need Jesus and they want to see the real thing. And I'm not saying you're perfect, but they want to see that it's real. They want to see it's real. They need it. They really need it. You got it. Let's share it with our friends and family. And remember, we only got this time, this lifetime while we have while we have breath in our lungs to do this. Once we're gone out of this earth, there is one thing you wish you could do more of, and that's tell people about Jesus. But if you tell people about Jesus, you could take them to the other side with you. And I don't want us to end up in heaven all by ourselves in the sense that we made it by the skin of our teeth, but no one else came. None of our family came. None of our relatives came. None of our neighbors came. None of our coworkers came. And they didn't come because they never heard anything about Jesus. That's not going to be our story. We're going to fill heaven by saving souls in, in, in this, this generation. And we're not going to let America go to hell. Okay, we're going we're gonna to do our part and shine our light and we'll let, we'll let God do his part. How many are in agreement? Come on. How many are in agreement? If we don't say nothing, it just remains dark, right? I want to give an opportunity for everybody that's here. And I'm going to let you know God loves every single one of you. Um, but, but this is a reality. Even though he loves you and he died for your sins and he paid the price and he suffered and he rose again from the dead. Um, if you don't call on Jesus, you're not going to be saved. That means you're not going to be saved from yourself. You're not going to be saved from the, the misery in your soul, in your mind, in your emotions. All that remains the same. The anger stays, the unforgiveness stays, the depression stays, the anxiety stays. You need to get saved and set free and healed. That's what Jesus does, right? The second thing, you're not going to be saved from your addiction. You're going to, you're going to wish that you could overcome it and your, the addiction is going to, it's going to destroy your life, destroy your family, destroy everything that you're touching and then eventually you're going to pass it on to the next generation. It's just going to destroy you from within. You need to get saved from that, okay? And that's why people come in here, years of heroin addiction, years of anger and unforgiveness and bitterness and sleepless nights and tormented by the devil. And they give their lives to Jesus. They get healed. They get set free. They get restored. And they get on track. And Jesus could do that right now. It's, it's awesome, right? And the third thing, if you don't call on Jesus, if you die in that condition unsaved, it'll be your choice. The Bible said the road to heaven is a narrow road and a few find it. But many choose, the, many choose the highway, the Bible talks about, to hell. And the Rolling Stones, sang, I think, I don't know if they sang it, but the highway to hell. Something like that. I don't know who did it. Who was it? Who was it? ACDC. Oh, yeah, ACDC. Antichrist, devil's children. <laughs> uh, leave the Rolling, he said, leave the Rolling Stones out of it. They sang, I can't get no satisfaction, right? Yeah, there you go. So they knew they couldn't get no satisfaction without Jesus. They were looking for it. Right? But anyways, um, I'm going to let you know God loves you. But you can have, this is your choice. If you call on Jesus, he'll save you right now, forgive you, and he'll give you a gift of eternal life, and he'll fill you with his spirit. That becomes you become a brand new person. This is not about I'm giving you rules and you got to obey the rules. I'm telling you this. You're going to become a brand new person and have the power to live a new life because you're going to have the power of Jesus in you. That's, that's totally different. You're a born-again believer. God's spirit is in me. I have a relationship with God. It's so close that his spirit is in me. Some of us have had spirits of demons inside of us. And God says, I want to kick those demons out. And then I want to put my spirit in you. Come on. How many believe that's, a, that's, that's, that's amazing, right? So I'm going to count to three. If you want forgiveness of your sins. And, and there's another group. You're backslidden. And you walked away from God. And, and, and you've been involved in all kinds of crazy stuff that God delivered you from. You went back. The Bible says like a dog back to his vomit. It's time for you to come back home. And God loves you. He cares about you. He's interested. I mean, he, he died for you. He, he wants a relationship with you. He's not here to condemn you. He's here to forgive you, set you free, and give you a brand new start. How do you come to Jesus? Come exactly the way you are. Come with your mess. God's going to fix you. God's going to heal you. God's going to restore you. And you're going to give glory to him. And say, man, that's Sunday. God did something to me. I was trying to get away. But he wouldn't let me get away. Okay. So I'm going to count to three. If you want to give your life to Jesus, you're going to have to say yes. And I'm going to have you do this. It's one gesture. Raise your hand when I say three. I want forgiveness of my sins. I want eternal life. I want to be saved. I want to be set free. I want to be made whole. I want the abundant life that God has for me. I want a new beginning. I want to start living a life of purpose. It's your choice. One. When I say two. When I say three, I want you to read two. And when I say three, 
Don't worry about what anybody's thinking on the right or the left. Because understand, you're going to stand before God. And the Bible says, if you confess me before men, I'll confess you before my Father. If you deny me before men, I'll deny you before my Father. This is serious business. And what's going to happen if you give your life to Jesus? We're all going to celebrate. Come on. Because every single one of us needs to be saved. Come on. Every single one of us uh, mate, that are saved called on Jesus the way you're calling on it. Let go of all pride. When I, don't let, forget about that. It's the greatest decision you'll ever make. Give your life to Jesus. One, two, three. Raise your hands all over this building. Proud of you. Proud of you. Proud of you. Proud of you. Awesome. All those hands in the back over there. I see that hand there. Anybody else on this side over here? See those hands over there? Over here on this side? Over here? I see those hands. I see those hands. I see it. Come on, let's give the Lord a hand. Someone's giving their life to Jesus. This is amazing. This is what we live for. This is what we've been sent to earth for. I want those, I want those that raise their hands, I want you to take one more step. I want you to come up here, and I'm just going to pray. We're not going to embarrass you. We're not going to, no, no speeches. What you're doing is saying, I'm taking my first step to follow Jesus. And when you leave your seat, I'm, you're saying this, I'm leaving my old life there, and I'm starting a new life with Jesus. Come on. It's like you're entering into a relationship with him. If you raise your hand, come forward. Ask your neighbor. If you want to grow up there, I'll grow up there with you. There's somebody that needs to, that didn't even raise their hand. And you still need to be up here. You need a new beginning. You need a new start. You come with your addiction. You come with the depression. You come with the tormented spirits. Come on. This is your new day. You come with your failures, your mistakes. We all been there. Come on, let's give them a hand. Come on, someone's Thank son's coming. You, someone's husband's Jesus coming. Someone's daughter's coming. Come on, someone's mama's coming. Come on, church, let's never get used to people getting saved. Come on, they're still coming. They're still coming. They're still coming. Someone's receiving eternal life. still coming. We want to make sure. Let's make room for them. Awesome. This is the whole family here. I'm so proud of you. What's your name? Jose. Jose and his whole family are coming up here, surrendering their lives to Jesus, giving, recommitting their lives to the Lord. That's great. Dino. Dino's up here. He heard the message and he's responded to the message. Just give Dino a hand. Proud of you, Dino. This is what you've been looking for. This is your answer. Young people, don't go out there and just like, oh, later. All, all you're doing is ruining your life. Come, just come now. Today's the day to get saved. If you keep going out there and just doing your thing in sin, all you're doing is just opening the doors to demons and pain and hurt and abuse, confusion. You start forgetting. You don't even know who you are anymore, right? And then that pain gets so severe, you try to find the anger, the frustration, the, the uh, like, you just become edgy. You start hurting people that never hurt you. And you start trying to escape your reality. I got to get out of here. I'm done, man. And you start running. And you're running from yourself. And everywhere you go, the problem is you're going to be there. Right? So I'm proud of every one of you. I, I don't know how many people are up here, but there's a lot of people. Okay? And this is your first step. And God loves you. He's going to meet you right where you're at. Okay? And God's going to forgive you right now. He paid the price for all your sins. All your sins are going to be forgiven and washed away right now. Okay? And, and then what we're going to do... We're also going to do this. It's time to forgive people that hurt you too. Let's let that go too. Receive forgiveness and say they don't deserve it. Don't worry about that. Let yourself go. So you can have joy. You can have peace. Let the, all the love of God come in your life. Okay? And you're making a decision to follow Jesus. It's not like I'm coming to church and I'm done. I'm following Jesus. So now you're going to change your schedule. You had a schedule following yourself and following whatever. Now change your schedule. I would say this. Every week, come to church. I don't care if you had a bad Saturday or a bad week. Who cares? Just come to church. 
We're gonna, this is our family. We're going to eat together. God's word. We're going to share. We're going to love each other. Okay? If you fall, get back up. Who cares? Get back up. Just don't stay down. But I'm not quitting. I'm not giving up. This is something worth fighting for. Okay? You're fighting for your family. You're fighting for your future. All right? Do it. Okay? And, and, then we, and, then we, and then we have classes. Holy Warriors classes are amazing. We got people, even like pastors coming from other churches that are coming and going through our Holy Warriors. And they get 10 years worth of growth in like six weeks. It's just amazing. So we got a plan of action for you. You're going to grow. Okay? Give us a year of your life. I guarantee you, by next year, you won't even know who you are. But you'll be looking at, who are you? You know where you're going to be? The, the, the person God created you to be. Come on. You're going to be smiling, be proud of yourself. Like, yeah, man, God is good. Right? Okay. So we're going to pray right now. And God knows your heart. And none of you are a mistake. None of you are an accident. He knows everything about you. He loves you. And I'm going to tell you even something bigger. He has a plan for your life. You've lived your plan. Now it's time to live God's plan. It's an amazing plan for good and not evil. You have hope and pro that you prosper. God has some good things for you, okay? Okay? I gave my life to Jesus, and I realized if I didn't, I was going to be in a mess. <laughs> I was going to be just like my father. I'd probably be dead right, right now, but I gave my life to Jesus. Thank God. Okay? So let's pray right now. Bow your heads, close your eyes, repeat after me. Say, Jesus, I thank you for, sent, for coming on this earth to die for my sins so that I could be forgiven. Today, I repent of all my sins and I confess you as my Lord and my Savior. Set me free from all addiction, depression, and every demon that has entered my life. In the name of Jesus, devil, get out of my life. Jesus, cleanse me of all my sin. I open my heart and I ask you now, fill me with your Holy Spirit. Make me a new person. I receive your peace. I receive your forgiveness. I receive your love. I receive your joy. And I forgive everybody that hurt me. I let them go too. Today, I am saved. I'm born again. And I am a disciple of Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, I receive the free gift of eternal life. I am saved. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's give the Lord a hand. Thank you, Lord, for touching them. Thank you, Lord, for calling them. Thank you, Lord, for saving them. They are now part of our family. God bless you. Need prayer? Stay right here. We'd love to pray with you. 